E3 is upon us. Or more like it's here already. It, it's June 9th, it's a Saturday, day minus two, technically, of E3. Uh, it gets earlier and earlier every year. And this is the start of Squeaky Whale's E3 coverage. We're gonna be talking uh, about, you know, every show. Uh, not every piece of news, there's other sites and other people who are better equipped to handle that. This is just gonna be a little bit of an opinion, uh, a post-show recap of the things I found most interesting. And first up, it's EA. The EA show is always the show that's the least interesting to me. I don't really care about sports games, and I'm not that interested in Battlefield stuff, so all that stuff is already outside my radar. I'm not really going to talk about it. Uh, there are a small few handful of things at the EA Play Showcase that I have some things to say about, but even those games aren't things that get me really excited. Uh, so let's start off with some of the smaller stuff, like uh, the little news pieces. The first little thing is an expansion to the Origin Access program called Origin Access Premier. Origin Access Premier is a new subscription service separate from Origin Access that will give you, well, access to all of EA's new games coming forward. Not the trials that you would get pre-release. These are the full games. All you gotta do is subscribe and you have access to them early. And I guess that's kind of neat. It costs more than the base subscription. It is $14.89 per month or $100 a year. And you can try it out with the first game in the program, which is Madden NFL 19. And that comes out on August 2nd for subscribers and then August 10th for everyone else. The next little tidbit we have is about Respawn's Star Wars project. Vincent Sampella was in the crowd and he talked a little bit, and I, and I emphasize a little bit, about Jedi of the Fallen Order is what their game is called. Uh, we don't know much about that besides it'll be coming out sometime in 2019. Uh, the best part of this entire little segment was actually Vince Sampella just trying real hard to sound excited. It was pretty hilarious. His delivery was just so like nonchalant. Just take a little look at this. Okay, all right, between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. You got it, uh, any other tidbits? No, it's, it's not a nice... It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> After that, there's a few indie games that I thought looked pretty interesting. There is the sequel to Unravel, which is called Unravel 2. Uh, I never played the first one, but I thought it looked really cute. And honestly, I'm probably not going to play the second one either, but yet again, it looks really cute. Unravel 2 brings in co-op. You can play with two people each controlling a different version of Yarny, or you can play as a single player campaign and just switch back and forth between the characters depending on what you need to do. The demo involved you running away from this turkey or this chicken, uh, which looked really goofy, but in the best way possible. Being able to distract the turkey uh, by swinging back and forth looked really neat and actually kind of fun. And a nice surprise, uh, the game is available right now. You can go download it. Of course, that was uh, leaked a little earlier before the show, but whatever. It's nice to have games just release immediately after they're showed. Um, again, I don't think I'll be playing that, uh, but depending on what people say, and, and how much people are liking it, I might pick it up and play it with a friend. The second indie game showed off at the EA show was one called Sea of Solitude. The developer got on stage and started doing this spiel of how loneliness is this dark, horrible feeling and how a lot of herself went into making this game and it was really a somber pitch, but it was one that drew me to whatever this game was. Oh, uh, we got a short little trailer. Don't really know what this game is in terms of gameplay, but it looks really vibrant and, 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 and colorful, but also really dark and moody. It's something that I am going to check out, I think. Like, she sold me with that lead up and that emotional pitch. I just want to see more of it before I say anything else. The basic premise is that you play as this woman whose loneliness have turned her into a monster, and you have to try to turn her back into a human. Uh, there are different shots of uh, the woman in a boat, kind of looking like a little furry creature, but also this enormous, giant, creepy sea monster. It looks really neat. I, I'm excited to see more. It comes out in 2019. Uh, no other hard date besides that. And now for the elephant in the room, Anthem. What the hell is Anthem? Well, after watching the showcase, I can tell you right now that I am not quite sure what Anthem is still. EA made the decision to start off their Anthem showing by bringing up a few folks from Bioware to talk about the game. 
you know, little developer Q&A kind of thing. And that felt rough. It felt like they didn't have much to show because all the B-roll for the segment was a loop of the same concept art and maybe 10 seconds of the robot suit flying in the air in different environments. The Q&A tried to explain how this is a Bioware game at its core and how there will be a Bioware story there, but there'll be multiplayer aspects and, and a world that your friends can join in and play co-op with you. Eventually they did show some gameplay, uh, but the gameplay, while it looks really neat, it looks really pretty, I like seeing those robots fly around, I like seeing them transition from the air and down into the water. Uh, we got some, you know, numbers flying out of enemies, which I'm totally down for. Even after all that, I still don't have a clear picture of what the main loop of this game is. They did talk a little bit about how the game will have four classes, but didn't really go too deep on that. You know, you have your heavy and what seems to be the equivalent of a magic user. They also talked about how there won't be any loot boxes in the game. There will be items for sale, but they'll all be cosmetic, stuff for your armor and that kind of thing. The demo reminded me a lot about the first time we heard about Destiny. This whole talk about every player will have their own story to tell, but without really showing much stuff to back that up and we all know how Destiny ended up turning out. And that's why I am cautiously optimistic about Anthem. We did get a release date. It is coming out February 22nd, 2019. I think that'll get pushed a bit. Uh, um, I, I, I see that game getting delayed, but it's really just a giant bummer that we didn't get to see more. Uh, it is playable at the show floor, so uh, some folks will be getting some hands-on on that. And, and, and I'll be you know, trying to read all that information. Uh, again, uh, Game Informer has their cover story as Anthem this month, so there'll be some new information there. But as for now, just off the showing, it was pretty weak. And that's pretty much it for EA. I don't really have much else to say, because like I said earlier, they're not the most interesting showcase to me. But there's still an entire week of E3 left to go, a ton of more conferences, and I'm sure I'll have a lot to say about you know, Sony and Microsoft and all that stuff that's coming down the road. So keep your eyes peeled. Go to squeakyweo.com, stick here on the channel, youtube.com slash squeakyweovids, like, subscribe, all that other nonsense that people normally ask for at the end of a video. And we'll see you, uh, well, later this week. Bye.